Hello, this is Mark Boyer, and this is a short, informative video on uh, our my pamphlet that I posted on a free marijuana party membership being a prescription to have possession of marijuana. Now, it's a brief, it's a, it's a four pager, okay? It's just basically four pages, and it outlines that basically, if you look up at the Dictionary of Canadian Law, uh, there's such a thing. There's no such thing as a prescription for marijuana. There is, but the courts say you have to have a prescription for marijuana in order not to be charged in the first place. But, you know, as I point out in detail in this pamphlet, the definition for prescribed by law fits. Okay? Frankly, there's not one definition for prescription under the CDSA, and that's the Controlled Drugs and Substance Act, and they're the guys who are insisting that you have a prescription. Now, if they don't have a definition under the Dictionary of Canadian Law for prescription, then it's all bullshit. They don't, you know, the MMAR court program is not a prescription. Otherwise, the definition of this card would be found under prescription. You know, the MMAR card program is a license. It's a permit that lasts only one year. And it's highly restrictive. It's also a very bad club to belong to. Basically, it permits police officers at their discretion to bust you for anything they feel is inappropriate at the time. And the best you can do is uh, get the charges dropped, if that. Uh, the MMAR program offers a shadow of protection, and that's about it. And frankly, a marijuana party membership actually makes your MMAR card uh, uh, better. It actually improves your rights because you can actually fix the traps that are there to... Uh, make you a criminal under the MMAR program. It's base I've argued in court that it's basically impossible for an MMAR card uh, holder not to be in violation of a law at any time at the indiscretion of any police officer and the judge agreed. Now uh, basically with uh, the Marijuana Party of Canada we have what's called a clear definition. Actually, all compassion clubs also have a clear definition under what's called prescribed by law. Now, prescribed by law, quote, okay? The limits will be prescribed by law within the meaning of Section 1 of the Charter if it is expressly provided by a statute or regulation or result of necessary implication of a statute or regulation, or for its operating requirements. The limits may also result in the application of common law. I know, that really doesn't sound like a prescription for marijuana, but it really is. <laughs> and it's the, the pamphlet goes through in great detail. It says at the beginning that we're protected under the Charter Section 1. Okay, and section one is all about democratic rights. Okay, and they use a term there called prescribed by law. And then, okay, we have at the end of that expression a term called a free and democratic society. Now, everyone is actually using this convoluted definition of prescribed by law to operate a compassion club. And it's what the city of Vancouver uses to authorize compassion clubs and the insight program. And it, it, it's a four page little pro, uh, pamphlet that's highly informative. Now basically, we're, we're outlining that in the Marijuana Party of Canada, we have clear protection from being under orders in council and section 126 of the Criminal Code of Canada that uh, no one else can offer. 
because we happen to be in the club called Parliament. Okay, the Marijuana Party of Canada really is uh, an officially recognized party, and that's because uh, a few years back, the the official, I think it was the. Uh, Liberal Party at the time said that they didn't want to accept that a one-issue party had official status. Uh, and we went to court and defended that, yes, we have official status, and we won. Now, official parties, what, what happened at that ruling is they actually, it was bad in one way because unofficial parties had no such rights as official parties. So basically, they slammed the door on any other official party being formed because it's really hard to get official status. Now, uh, basically, because we have official status means we are uh, in Parliament even though we never elected anyone. Okay, We have all the rights of being a loyal opposition. And under that, we, and basically we're ruled now under what's called the Supremacy of Parliament. Okay. And the rule of law clearly states that the law is supreme over the governors and private individuals in order to bar the abuse of power. And that's contained in orders and council. Now, they can't use the arbitrary use of orders and council against our political party members. Period. It's against the rules and that are prescribed by law under the supremacy of parliament okay it has to have some safeguards to protect people now the biggest safeguard that it protects is against 126 of the criminal code of canada and that law i detail in full under defense under 126 of the criminal code of canada which i just posted today okay this here is uh at best, shocking. You know, what can I say? Uh, the reality is, is um, it exposes what I call uh, the elephant in the corner. Okay, and they, the law can ignore the elephant in the corner all at once, but it's still there. Okay, and the reality is, is uh, the law has been manipulated and turned onto itself. Uh, basically, uh, 126 of the Criminal Code of Canada has been there for hundreds and hundreds of years, and it's never been misused like it is today. Okay, 126 of the Criminal Code of Canada says that everyone with a lawful excuse can contravene an act of Parliament by willfully engaging in things that are forbidden. Uh, because he has a lawful excuse. Now, the reality is, is we now have Harper's new omnibus bill coming into effect. And that makes Pierre Trudeau's omnibus bill look like a Sunday school picnic. All our rights are going to be onslaughted all over again. It's a brand new slate as of November. And basically, people... Activists especially need to wake up to the reality that you need some new ammunition. Okay, Our defense under 126 is bulletproof. But regrettably, we are not. But you know what? It beats going down like cowering, sniveling peasants, which is what they're trying to do. You know, this new omnibus bill is driving home the last nails to in, you know to implement total feudal law in Canada. End of story, chapter and verse. And somebody has to challenge this law. Okay? As soon as the law is implemented, guaranteed police are going to bust some key activists in order to get decisions from a court so that they can continue bashing heads heads like they always have and return to the drug war that makes them all kinds of money and gives them all kinds of power. Okay, it's a sick little game, and the implementation of the new omnibus bill 
is ominous to say the least. Okay? Please read my defense with the 126 of the Criminal Code of Canada. It basically says that, you know, in law, an attorney general cannot walk in at pretrial and rig your trial. In law, the attorney general cannot interfere with any of your proceedings because you're from the loyal opposition that has a direct, direct guarantee to protect our beliefs under territorial jurisdictions of a claim of right. And frankly, no claim of right has ever been done without the majority in power and the king being so terribly wrong. Okay? The Charter and Rights and Freedoms, due to some sleazy backroom deals, has actually made us, you know, being ruled by King Harper. Okay? It, it, it's evil. Uh, it has to be stopped. And basically, uh, this can of worms called the Omnibus Bill can slap back at the government because uh, it's just gone overboard and the Supreme Court of Canada uh, will have to act one way or another. And uh, what do you know? Uh, that's what's going down. Uh, personally, I think anyone who does not take up the fact that the only party in Canada that won't abandon an electoral district association, EDA, if it gets uh, uh, progressive in supporting cannabis laws, uh, is the Marijuana Party of Canada. All other parties will disband and throw out anyone who is proactive pot from their party. Just look what the shameless activity of the NDP did to Mark Emery's supporters last election. And it's self-evident no party will support its EDAs like the Marijuana Party of Canada has. It has an excellent track record of letting an EDA do exactly what it wants. Okay, Under an electoral district association, you have an excellent opportunity to prescribe by law a set of lawful activities and rules and regulations that you deem necessary in order to protect a compassion club that you operate under the Marijuana Party of Canada. You can protect yourself from Canada revenue saying you have to pay taxes because technically in under the Elections Act you can collect a party sales tax and have your right pocket pay your left pocket 10% of the gross sales of your part of your Compassion Club's business and use that money in order to pay the rent, pay the phone bill, and operating costs of uh, running a political party. And it also is there for you to run in the next election. And guaranteed, it's an ironclad defense. And it's all under the definition of prescribed by law. And technically, we are being run by a bunch of hooligans who are operating under 126 of the Criminal Code of Canada, which is a defense to break the law with a lawful excuse that any attorney general can dream up in a New York minute. Uh, what can I say? Read the pamphlet. It's very informative. And... Uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it's better than picking up guns and shooting them, which is what they deserve. Okay? Democracy is a platform where fools rush in and hope others will support them. And this is one of those classic, case, classic cases. Uh, please, uh, read the pamphlet, get informed. The laws are about to be sent on their head somewhere around November. and. Uh, Protect yourself. Uh, thank you very much.